Hello everybody, uh, my name is Steve Pierce. I am a senior lecturer at the University of Bristol and today I want to talk to you about service design for customer surrogate interaction uh, to think about the design characteristics uh, for customer acceptance. Hello, here's a picture of me in 2018 in Venice when things were real and interactions happened face to face. Trouble is, I can't remember much about 2019, what, where, when. So I'm going to have a look at that quickly before we start our main presentation. And then we're going to look at research design. Uh, we're going to think about the theoretical concepts around uh, service design. Uh, using unified services theory, we're going to look at digital interactions uh, and how they perhaps should be designed. And I'm going to propose a conceptual model uh, that helps us understand service design characteristics uh, and then look at the application of that model to some service design cases. Uh, and then finally to, to, to summarize the, the findings and some ideas for further research. So flipping back to 2019, uh, I can remember Albright here. But what did I do when I was not in the conference? What did my partner do while I was at the conference? Where did my partner go each day? When did it happen? Where can I search and check the data easily from two years ago? These are some questions that I'm hoping my service design research might help me answer. So the research design for this is uh, really uh, addressing the conference themes. I'm thinking about understanding interactions. I'm thinking about service business models. I'm thinking around design for innovation in the digital economy. And then I'm looking at control, privacy, and trust. So the research question that, that this presentation really is trying to address is what are the service design characteristics for customer and mediating technology service systems? And the research aim really is to develop a conceptual framework uh, for these interactions. And the methodology uh, I've used uh, in my research uh, initially, uh, a literature review, and that continues, uh, looking specifically at uh, two case studies and also using service sampling, uh, and then uh, using the PCN process mapping methodology uh, pioneered by Samson, with the idea that I can apply uh, some of this theory to the design of teaching and my digital business unit. Just a very quick reminder of those for you, for those of you who are not familiar with unified services theory, its services are defined as when customers provide significant inputs, and these particular inputs are the self, the belongings, and the customer's information. And what the service company is trying to do is to add value to these customer inputs. Uh, and then there are different degrees of customer input. There could be an awful lot of customer input, uh, or there could be a minimal amounts, more like manufacturing. And of course, uh, Samson talks about this uh, input of customers' uh, resources happening simultaneously. So service design theory, and within uh, Scott's work, he talks about direct interaction. Uh, this is people with people. He talks about surrogate interaction, which is a person acting with the resources of another, uh, often their belongings or information. And then independent processing where an entity is using all their own resources. So the key things here is the word entity. Uh, it can mean a person, but it can also mean uh, a piece of technology. And here's the example of, of those three here, the, the way we used to do our banking. We used to interact over the counter. 
uh, the way we now do our banking, which is on a mobile app or through an ATM. Uh, and then the independent processing of those banking operations uh, where those uh, transactions and reconciled and investments made. So those are the types of interaction. And the PCN methodology uh, maps those interactions from the perspective of direct interaction people with people in the center of this diagram or surrogate interaction where the resources of those particular entities are are being used by the other entity and so their information and their possessions are being used by the alternative entity and the key thing here of course is the, the level of control uh, that the the entity has as you can see where you're doing things completely as independent processing, you technically have more control of the particular process. And this was a, a case study, case A, where I looked at, uh, specifically looked at the old process of interacting with a library counter uh, and exchanging books. And one of the uh, outcomes of these interactions uh, it can be these. It can be inefficiency, it could be economies of scale, and it could be customization. So Samson uh, really, really considers these outcomes to be uh, directly related uh, to these particular interaction types. Uh, and my research was very much looking at the, the interaction, the direct interaction and the move to surrogate interaction in the customer's domain. And that's something we'll be very familiar with because it's effectively self-service. So what we've all been used to is the move from the direct interaction, people to people, to self-service. And that has been much, much more uh, evident over the last uh, two years with the pandemic where uh, many, many direct interactions in the service economy have moved to surrogate interaction rapidly. And so the conceptual model uh, around these interactions, uh, for me, comes from the interaction of the service process, this is in the center of this diagram, and the customer inputs into that service process. And here you can see there is a mediating technology uh, with the digital economy now. Uh, and you have the customer in the service process using the mediating technology. And there may or may not be a service worker. There would have been a service worker. But if you move to a, uh, a surrogate interaction, usually the service worker uh, is no longer there. And here you can see the, the outcomes so that, as we saw with the PCM methodology, you could end up with process efficiency. I've clearly added process effectiveness to give us a, a quality metric. Uh, and then there's customization economies of scale. Clearly, at the front end, the left hand side of this, there are designs of that service process and the designs of the mediating technology, and there are designs of the provider's processes. So we have some service design characteristics. So this conceptual model is largely saying that there are some service design characteristics that create an interaction with these customer inputs and the customer resources and customer labor, and they create outcomes for the provider uh, in the blocked out process efficiency and process effectiveness and also possibly for the customer and provider in terms of customization economies of scale. So that's the conceptual model on which my uh, research is based. And when we start to look at the literature and we start to look at service design characteristics for each of those uh, entities, we start to see on the right hand side the provider one and we're pretty familiar in operations with most of those duration process control waiting time task so when you you look at the literature 
you, you find those sorts of process design characteristics. And then when you look at the mediating technology, you start to find uh, some of the more recent types. Uh, and of course, this is very much a, a changing space with, with technology and innovation change. So you've got the functionality and you've got something between the, the process task and the technology fit. You've got something around system control and access and resilience and reliability, uh, handling input and output, and then information and asset security. So there's some examples of design characteristics that come from the literature here. I am sure there are more, um, but those are the ones that were pretty prevalent when I was doing my literature research. If you come to customer, there is much fewer. Uh, ones that relate directly to the process and the, the customer's interaction with the process. Where they exist, they, they include the duration of the interaction, the perceived control, the waiting time, we're often quite familiar with that one, uh, the perceived ease of use, often coming from the technology acceptance models, um, and one that we often don't think about is around risk perception. So how risky is it for the customer uh, to undertake this uh, interaction to provide their resources and possessions? And then the final one, really the, the level of confidentiality and security the customer also perceives. So these uh, from the literature were my uh, service design characteristics that I wanted to test out uh, alongside that theoretical model uh, and here are the results so case B uh, we looked at case A in the beginning where it was uh, uh, a person-to-person -person interaction uh, case B is a self-service interaction uh, and in this case uh, looking at those customer design characteristics uh, that came from the literature on the left hand side uh, and then looking at the outcomes associated with process efficiency and effectiveness uh, and this case gave us the impact of this movement from service to self-service or from interaction face-to-face -to, -face to digital economy interactions because self-service is fundamentally uh, the basis of most successful digital economy uh, interactions. And what changed in this particular case is the service concept changed, the service encounter changed, the service process changed. And what improved was the efficiency and the effectiveness. So the trade-offs were removed. So this resulted in reduced costs, fewer service workers, better asset control, uh, maintained opening hours. So uh, actually reducing uh, service workers provided more resources to uh, keep, keep assets operating. And it enriched roles uh, of the people involved and, and who stayed in the organizations. So these service outcomes enhanced the value proposition. And, and I've really grouped all of this, these outcomes as a, as a feature of competitive advantage in the digital economy. And one of the themes uh, for this year's conference. So I took those design principles uh, and I applied them to case C. Uh, and case C is service design for a digital business unit that I teach. And I very, very carefully structured the learning uh, and the activities and the service processes, if you like, uh, into surrogate interaction and direct interaction. And of course, I was forced to do this in some respects uh, because of the pandemic. But you can see that the vast majority, having removed lectures, uh, because they were not lectures, they were mini lectures, uh, pre-recorded like this one. Uh, there was some online chat support. 
and there were some online non face to face tutorials. Now they are still direct interaction. The mini lectures uh, are, are, are perhaps are not uh, there in the surrogate domain, but the online lectures were still happening, but they were not face to face. So you've got two categories of lecture here, and you've got the, uh, the, the, the different surrogate interactions. So very carefully designing the unit to meet the learning outcomes uh, and to design it around those characteristics. Uh, so behind each of these is, is uh, an element of those design characteristics that has probably the limitations of the, the learning platform. And I was delighted to, to be nominated for an innovative teaching award uh, by students for design, for the design of the uh, particular unit. And that's the first time I've, I've ever had an award for design. So I was really quite pleased with that. So the outcome was, uh, uh, interestingly, 360 students. Uh, effectiveness, efficiency, um, uh, outcomes, and customization. There was a lot of choice given to students, even on their assessment, uh, which was much wider than, than uh, um, uh, the types of questions that you'd usually expect. Uh, so they had much more choice to investigate a digital business. And then I just want to go back to the questions of where I was uh, in 2019. And uh, of all the places to look to find out where my partner was, what she was doing and where I was, I went to my bank and I searched the dates for the uh, particular Cade conference and I found the locations instantly. I found the transactions instantly. I found an example of uh, this expenditure and the rate all on my mobile phone. Uh, and this is a UK challenger bank uh, and so this is a level of customization from a bank that one often never sees. The ability to search the ability to uh, understand what you were doing and to, to go back under archive conditions almost to find out previous transactions and locations. Uh, and this is so customized that uh, often when I, I go into a fuel station uh, and I was doing this in all sorts of parts of Europe, uh, my wife, who's got a joint account on this, was getting the notification of transactions before I'd walked back to the car. Uh, and so, uh, and they, they effectively have a, a process which is entirely surrogate interaction, including the opening of the account, which takes less than five minutes. Uh, and here's the example here. And you can see this is, this is why this is fundamental to the uh, competitive advantage in the digital economy, because it gives that customization, uh, it gives uh, massive efficiency, for the uh, organization, for the provider, because it all moves it into that left-hand side, that independent processing where there are huge economies of scale. So that's my case dear uh, UK Challenger Bank. And so to summarize my findings uh, from the cases, uh, the technology and the organized interactions uh, with the custom, uh, customer control efficiency for the provider. Uh, there is mediating technology de designs which are now dominant. The uh, technology designs uh, around customer use and acceptance really require careful consideration of the perceptions, particularly those customer design characteristics. And of course, the, the UST uh, and that PCS, PCN mapping uh, methodology gives a very good uh, mechanism for analyzing service design and creating competitive advantage. Uh, and so finally, uh, my research ideas to move forward are to create a conceptual paper on service design characteristics based on this. Uh, a theoretical paper around service design and particularly handling variation and customization and efficiency, uh, uh, perhaps a new theory to, to uh, 
re rebuked the, the chase theory around variation. Uh, with the view to creating some empirical papers on case outcomes uh, and pedagogical papers on service design to pick up that case uh, on, on the teaching and to identify more cases for more validation of the theories. So that's my research ideas. Um, there were some references uh, for the uh, extended abstract. Uh, and uh, over to you for some questions. Uh, I want to start uh, with a new role. I want to start uh, focusing more on uh, research and my research plan. So thank you very much for listening to me.